Hey, good, mor good morning, YouTubers. Um, been a long time since I've, I don't know if I'm in focus or not. Um, doesn't matter. I, it's been a long time since I've made a video of, of, uh, of just kind of talking and tying a fly. So I'm gonna do that today and hopefully I won't have to edit anything. And uh, uh, this is gonna be mostly talking and yakking and um, just thinking about stuff. And it'll be a little bit about tying a muddler. So I got some cement in that hook eye right there. Come on, there we go. Uh, uh, I'm gonna be tying mugglers and I'm gonna talk a little bit about mugglers. And uh, maybe that'll be helpful. And uh, it, you know, if you really, if you're here straight for fly instruction, you can pass on this uh, because it's gonna be weak on instruction or maybe be modest on it. And uh, it's just going to be a lot of just, just talking about what's been going on in uh, life and that kind of stuff. So let's, uh, let's get down to where we need to get, to where we can, uh, you know, it's going to, I've had serious cat harassment uh, up till this point with Boomer and Gracie all over the table, all over my lap. Um, wanting to just be real lovely. Okay, uh, this is, um, so I've, first I'll talk about this fly. This is a muddler I tied uh, a day or so ago, and I used curved scissors to help me get going. Small curved scissors, and then I used the big curved scissors to get the back part of the fly and this gives you kind of a rounded head I'm gonna do another fly uh, another muddler um, it's got a different shaped head and uh, you'll have uh, you'll have some perspective maybe hopefully and uh, you know of course you can tie muddler any old size you want any well I couldn't do a 16 I uh, absolutely maybe years ago, but not even close nowadays. Uh, I think I'm most comfortable in the size six to size uh, two range. I'm not gonna um, put that thread right up to the edge. <clears throat> this is a 210 denier. I like a fairly strong thread. Uh, GSP, I, I use a lot of GSP. Um, the 210 is nice because it's a little bit waxed. It's, uh, oh, there goes my super glue dot. Got it. Uh, hmm. I wonder if I'm getting any sound. Let's, let's try putting this thing over here. You can see I'm covered with cat fur. Um, so anyway, as is usual now, I get my hook down, I get a, a thread base, and then I get uh, a little bit of a SG super glue on there. So uh, yeah, and I don't know if you, if you're I'm not making a dime off these these videos. Um, I've thought about it and I could certainly use it, but now I don't know if YouTube is playing advertisements on my channel. I really don't know. Should I, I should find that out. But uh, all I, I really want, I guess I'm doing a couple things. I'm expressing myself and I'm providing entertainment and part of the, part of what I hope to accomplish here is to pass some stories it, it, in the process of being at least a tiny bit entertaining i hope to pass some information along that will be helpful to others or interesting or comforting uh, maybe just to let you know that you're not the only one that feels a certain way or has gotten something right or gotten something wrong so I'm going to use uh, 
I've got a brush here and it's an uh, EP intruder brush and they're, these are kind of weird things um, that's not enough these are kind of weird things you, you know you've just about got to get them and experiment with them they're very sparse um, some of the colors I really like some I don't I just trim some off the black tips, at least at this point in time, uh, black tips. If you don't watch it, the the dye will uh, will dye your fingers. Uh, but I like them for a number of things that they probably weren't intended for. Uh, so I, you know, I've gotten. Where I tie my mudlers with, uh, I don't use standard materials or approaches. I, I want fish and flies. I'm talking way too much about this fly, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shift gears. Um, what's been going on? Uh, a lot. Um, by the way, this this piece of deer hair is not. This is not a good spinning hair but I'm gonna use it anyway because it's probably what most of most folks have on their bench is deer hair maybe long enough but it's not really very good spinning hair so I'm gonna I, I don't I, I hate this piece I don't hate it but I don't like it very much so what's been going on life's been going on haven't been doing a lot of fishing I've been, uh, see, it's, it, this is, imp it's impossible to stack this and get all the short hairs out, so I gotta comb it twice. I've been doing almost no salmon fishing. I've been uh, doing a little bit of tuna fishing. I have more to say about that, eventually. Um, Spend time with my family. Uh, I've recorded a bunch of fly tying videos for Chris at the shop, and they're they're kind of getting filed away, probably to be used this winter sometime. Be a few of them come out now. Um, I haven't even really started thinking about salmon season, which is crazy. I do want to go sea run fishing here as soon as I can. And it's, I, I did try about a month ago and it was, it was too soon and the water was too warm and I couldn't find any fish. But now it's like almost September, the very end of August. And I think the water's starting to cool down, and I think I'm gonna. I think there's gonna be fish now where there weren't a month ago. I'm just convinced of it. And if if they aren't right where I go fishing, they'll be someplace, and maybe I'll have the initiative to go find them. Maybe I won't, but that remains to be seen. So, uh, tuna fishing, one of the things that's crazy about tuna fishing is that it is, it is frantic fishing. It is uh, periods, it, it can be hours of uh, total boredom and monotony. But when the bite is on, and, and the bite may only last, you know, three fish, it may be a three fish bite or two fish bite. But it's, it's just frantic because you you know the potential is there to catch more than a couple, but you have to you have to capitalize on every second. And so you know the last time I went out it was kind of funny. I was out fishing with Kevin, and uh, he was you know he was you know I've fished for years I know what I'm doing fishing but you never would have known it that day because we hooked up a couple of tuna on the troll and we stopped and it was time to cast this or that and I, c 
couldn't get anything right. I was fall. It was rough. I was falling down over coolers and ice bags and my own feet, and uh, I was tangling lines and leaders. And Kevin kept saying, "Jay, get a hook in the water. Get a hook in the water." And uh, I said, "I'm trying, Kevin. I'm trying." And you know, I pick up one rod and I go to move it to put it away, and I reach for another rod and I figure out that the first rod I was moving, I had um, it was tangled around two more rods. And Kevin kept saying, "Jay, put it down. Get another rod. Get a bait in the water." Yeah, it was bait. That's okay. I'll live. Uh, I couldn't do it. After a while, I just said, Kevin, I just, and meanwhile, you know, Kevin's, oh, here they come. Oh, they, they're, they're right here. Oh, I missed one. Oh, I missed another one. Oh, I got one. They're, they're, they're still, they're still here, Jake. Get a hook in the water. And I, after a while, I just said, Kevin, I know you're trying to help me. And of course, the boat is rocking back and forth and back and forth and you were hanging on and kind of trying to brace ourselves. I said, Kevin, I'm doing the best I can. Just just leave me be. And he did. He was very gracious. Well, that's one of those things. If I hadn't been messing up, I, I know we could have converted to at least one more tuna, maybe a couple, maybe several. Anyway, it's that tuna fishing is just it's just frantic stuff. And when those big fish are around your boat and they're zooming around, and I've ha had it when I'm casting a fly to them, and they would zoom right up to my fly. By the way, this is one of those round head mudlers. Uh, they'd be zooming around, they, they'd zoom right at my fly. And then they would turn away so close that it, it, it uh, the turbulence of their turn, the turbulence created by their turn in the water, r roiled, it moved my fly. I tried fast strip, I tried slow strip, steady, I tried a twitch, I tried just tossing the fly out there and letting it drift alongside the boat. They rejected every one of my offerings. It was maddening because you know I tie great tuna flies. But on this particular day, they didn't want anything to do with my nonsense. Uh, other times, uh, I've had those tuna follow my fly right to the boat, and then uh, I've had at one point I had three tuna, a little tiny short fly, like a two and a half incher. Uh, my fly right, and I was like doing the figure eight thing, like they do for musky, and these albacore were just, you know, they swim around, coming close to it, swimming away opening their mouth, closing their mouth by the fly. Finally, two of them veered away, and it would have made the thing, and oh, I was so happy to hook that fish. Uh, but it, it's, it's something the tuna get into a frenzy sometimes, and then when it's contagious because I do the same thing. I get into a frenzy. So how's this looking? Oh, come on, buddy. Come on, Boomer. I don't know how this is going to work. It might not at all. Uh, so this is a round head fly, a round head muddler. Let me look at it from the side. It's pretty symmetrical. Surprisingly symmetrical. A little yellow uh, fiber hair, synthetic. Uh, I got hackle. I got deer hair all the way around. I've, I've trimmed it a little bit more on the bottom, so it's a little bit sparser on the bottom. We'll get a, we'll work a little bit of uh, cement in here, and uh, it's finished with what finishes. Okay, and let's try. Let's tie another one and see uh, see what I ramble about then. 
Uh, I'm, I'm going to do this next one kind of cone shaped. Um, so anyway, had uh, I've had three tuna trips so far this year. The first one was a bust. The second one was a very good trip. And the third one was a very good trip. It was a very good trip with me making a lot of mistakes. Come on. Yeah, come on. Now settle down. Settle down. Let's, let's, oh yeah, you got your pause right through my microphone wire. Okay. Um, where was I? Third trip. Oh yeah, very good trip. Um, in spite of the fact, by the way, if you ever use super glue around a cat, be real careful because you don't want to. Not going to be good for that kitty if you get super glue on them. Uh, how did I? Oh yeah, I, I used a, a dubbed body on that, so I'm going to use a dub. I. I uh, so I'm actually, I'm, these mugglers, I'm mostly fishing wet. Um, mostly fishing these wet. Come on, come on, settle down, settle down. Um, and uh, if I was strictly fishing them dry, I would, uh, what would I do? I'd probably use a diamond braid for the body because it doesn't absorb water. And uh, I might use some odd color combinations. And I'm, I'm going to go over all this, uh, all this detailed muddler stuff. Oh, you will be so bored with mudlers when, you, when we get through with this. But uh, suffice to say, uh, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, come on, get that. Ooh, I forgot to move this one. Uh, and I'm, I'm not putting this thread in a bobbin rest. I probably should. I, I know I could, but I find I don't have to. Just get a bunch of extra lines. Now I gotta get, and I can unwind some of those if I want to. That's fine. Got my handy Norm clutch bobbin. I miss Norm. I miss being able to call Norm up and say hi and ask him how things are going. We do, you know, when we get to my age, we start losing our friends. And uh, uh, it's a loss. It's a, just a genuine loss. Anyway, I got my trusty nor bobbin, and I didn't get my body far enough up there, but nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know. But the important thing, I, I don't want to start tying my head clear back here, because if I do, I'm going to have, it's going to be way too long. Come on, Boomer, give me a break. Um, I think I was probably talking about too, but it doesn't matter. So this fly here, um, this fly here is going to have a different shaped head. Oh yeah, I'll, 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 I'll tell you something that is, is kind of funny. Uh, I tied up some really nice looking tuna flies and they were, uh, had a heavily weighted head because I want them to really uh, penetrate the water and uh, I want to make about a I only need to make about a 40-foot cast, which even I can do um, from the dory when we've got tuna close. And then, but I want that fly to go down, and that's the tricky part. So I got a nice heavy head, and I tied a really nice fly, and uh, took it down. I only tied about six of them, thank goodness. Took them down to the Willamette and tried to swim them, but doggone things wanted to be on their side. Oh yeah, I'm going to use a different piece of deer hair here. This is, I like this deer hair better for spinning. 
uh, I took down the darn flies. Wanted, they didn't want to ride hook up. They didn't want to ride hook down. Excuse me. They wanted to ride with hook to the side. And I was like, how is this even possible? I, I, I didn't get it. And I still don't get it. And I, so I'd grab them and I'd just turn the fly completely over. I turned the dark, you know, the back of the fly to the one way or another and turned the belly and, and they just did not want to swim true and I don't know why. So I came home and uh, I think it has something to do with the, uh, the heads, the weighted heads I was using. It's, uh, I'm not going to mention here because I don't want to seem adverse to them. But I came home and I thought, you know, I'm going to take care of this because I, I like the idea of this fly for albacore. And um, yeah, I'm having a little, i got to be just kind of working this around. I want deer hair all the way around this. And do I have them? Oh, that's what I do. I'm going to cinch down. Cat isn't making it any easier. Um, so I came home and tied the thing on a 60 degree jig hook. And I think the 60 degree jig hook is going to be perfect, isn't it, buddy? Huh? Isn't it going to be perfect? So it's not, it's not really the best albacore hook. It's a definitely a freshwater hook. But, uh, I think, I think it's going to really do the trick. I know it's going to ride with the dark side up and the belly side down. And uh, at least I think it will. I haven't swung that one yet. So I got a new, new albacore fly to try and I might, this is uh, Friday. It's almost September and I may get, uh, we got the Labor Day weekend coming up and I may get to go to the fishing Monday with Ed. So if I do, I'll get a chance to swim with that fly, hopefully over to me. Um, maybe just over silver if we can't get to the two rounds. Anyway, I, <clears throat> I've got two tests. Number, I know it's going to catch fish. I just know it. But I, I want it to ride true. And you know what? It's conceivable that it, it catch fish even if it doesn't ride true. And we, we all we know that our fish will take all sorts of things. You know, we tie these flies and we think we know how they're going to perform and what the fish is going to think of them. We don't really. But then we get to swim them, and sometimes the fly doesn't look so good, but the fish just like it just fine anyway. Sometimes we come up with a great theory and uh, our theory pans out to be right. You know I'm being... Boomers, he's going to give up after a while. He's not like, getting the attention he wants. I'll be able to tie a whole lot better. What am I doing? So, uh, so that, so that's that. Tuna are silly things. Uh, I get worked up. I get flustered. Uh, catch fish where I don't. Now, sea run fishing is a whole different thing. I've never, you know, it have. Well, I have, I have run into a, a few situations over the years where you drop in a spot, and there must be twenty of them little beasts laying in spot because you throw a fly out and a fish will flash at it and you throw another fly out and two or three fish will come at it at the same time and that's pretty exciting but you know these are 12 to 14 inch fish usually or 10 to 13 or maybe you got a few big ones in there hopefully you do oh yeah these are 16 to 22 inch cutthroat hmm my dreams maybe uh, you don't get quite as flustered 
with fish of that size as I do with bigger ones. You know, cat can lie in right on the cord. Uh, right on the cord. Okay, I'm going to zoom in now and I'm going to try to show you my um, my trimming because the trimming for this mud, and by the way, there's a couple weird things about this. I wound up having to put, I think, a couple of extra clumps of gear here on there and uh, that that's different with the other part. Um, I got that total trimming in the microphone wire here. Come on, let's get out from under. I'm going to try just setting the microphone down in front of the... Okay, get the cat settled down, get the microphone down. Um, Okay, I gotta, maybe that's zoomed in too much. How's that? Okay, so, uh, flat scissors. I'm gonna just cut, start cutting at an angle from the hook eye. And I'm gonna try to repeat that angle all the way around the hook. And when I say angle, that's that's probably not very good communication. I'm looking for a taper where it's smaller at the head with the eye of the hook and wider as you go back towards the collar. Um, you know, you go to stores and you look at... Uh, of course, when you're looking at the production mugglers, they're coming out of a, a fly factory and they're being tied by uh, people, often women, who are working for, I think, very low wages. And so, so if, you, if you ignore all the social, uh, ethical inequities of the situation, you know, if you just look from the angle of a consumer and I'm getting into dangerous territory here uh, it's awesome because we get if you get the right brand we get absolutely awesome flies you see how that angle is working out pretty nicely it's really uh, we get really 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 good flies And uh, good flies, good hooks, they're durable, they're consistent, they're um, tied on great hooks. Um, but we've, uh, and I know I've mentioned, I know I've harped on this before, but we've, we've kind of lost the creativity that we had when I was a kid. And all, there were so many flies in the United States that were being tied in in little local communities. It was tied by the shop teacher, the home ec teacher, the coach. Uh, it was usually those. It wasn't usually the history teachers or the math teachers. Uh, They're tied by kids in high school, maybe in grade school. If you went to any, so that's that's uh, that, this is a really large head. I'm going to try to trim this down a little bit and maintain my angle. Uh, so we, we had, you know, if if you went into five different gas stations around uh, a small town, every one would have some flies in a 21 compartment box for sale, and they'd be tied by local people. And some would be really good, and some would be really horrible, uh, or you know, weak in craftsmanship. But they were different, and uh, that's something we've lost. Because if you go into fly shops all over the country, all over the country, you see you see excellence and consistency, and we have 
No, I, I won't say we've lost creativity because if you know you go into some fly shops and they they will want their mufflers tied to different specs, perhaps. And so you, you will see some different things. But anyway, that's enough of that. I go through phases myself. I went through a phase where I, I probably tied 50 mufflers with round heads and uh, probably tied 100 that had flat head or uh, flat bottom kind of rounded head uh, by the way I, I want to give a shout out to Gunner Brammer uh, awesome fly tire thinks about his styling and his flies performance and gives good instruction and I've learned a lot from him so thank you I'm going to give a, cat, a shout out to Camera Conspiracies. Now, what are you doing, Jordan? Come on, come on. Don't do that. Come on. Let's let's get down. Come on. Go ahead, get down. Go ahead, get down. Come on. Camera Conspiracies. I've been, you know, trying to research a good camera. And, uh, this guy is so funny. He is really fun. He's so entertaining. And he's trying to make a living off his, uh, his channel. More power to him. Uh, anyway, thank you. I've watched a, little, a lot of YouTubes on fish and tuna and how to tie, uh, how to splice braid to mono, braid to foro. Mono or Foro to hollow braid, and uh, you see a lot of good videos, and you see some. I've seen a lot of videos that are made by what I assume are really nice people trying to make, trying to break into a, making a living on YouTube, and uh, frankly, a lot of their instruction is pretty weak. Um, uh, but that's that. I, I'm sure some of you look at my, at my uh, the instructional aspects of my videos uh, and go, wow, that guy's weak. That's right. Uh, okay, so you see how this one ha has this kind of taper like that? Let me try to put this other one next to it. Let's see if you can, let's see what, maybe I can put it right here. Uh, I can't see that. What if I go head to head? Okay. So see this one, of course it's darker hair, it doesn't show up as well. But it's definitely more blunt. Uh, this one, I, I like, I'm, I'm going through a tapered phase. Okay, this has been too long. Uh, if you found this entertaining, I'm happy about that. Um, have a wonderful day, week, weekend um, go fishing tie flies uh, be good to other people be uh, be good thank you see you soon